China's military has been rapidly growing and modernizing. Things like their warships and stealth fighters are quickly catching up with that of the US. And in some ways, like with hypersonic missiles and anti-ship ballistic missiles, have even outpaced that of the US. However, there is one area that China still lags behind, and that's with their ground forces, most notably their tanks. Some elements of them are great, others not so much. As you can see here, many just have naked steel plate armor in some real vital locations, meaning they can be defeated by even 1960s era heat warheads. Why is this? Is it a lack of knowledge of knowing how to build better armor? Maybe a lack of funds? Or maybe China's doctrine just differs from that of the US and Russia, and therefore are not worried about asymmetrical attacks. The US had to learn that lesson the hard way in 2003 in Iraq, and Russia as well in Chechnya. So, is it possible that China will just have to learn the hard way too? But first, real quick, our sponsor, Blinkist, which is something you should go check out. If you watch my videos, odds are you're like me and you like nonfiction. And the internet is great for that, but the information there isn't always trustworthy. Online articles are all about getting quick clicks for ad revenue. But books, on the other hand, are where you can find a much better and wider source of information, as the information there is more thought out to stand the test of time. And as you see here, I have dozens of them, but unfortunately no time to read them all. And this is where Blinkist really shines. Blinkist enables you to understand the key ideas in 15 minutes, either through reading or listening to their audio highlights, which they call Blinks. They currently have more than 5,000 titles from 27 different categories, and they also have podcasts as well. So whatever you're into, you are bound to find some content that piques your interest. So go now and check them out. With my link down in the description, you'll get a 7-day free trial and then 25% off a premium membership. And the best part is, if you don't like it, they make it incredibly easy to cancel any time during that trial and it won't cost you a thing. So, go give it a try and see what they have to offer. As far as tanks, China operates a wide variety, the Type 59D being the oldest. It's mostly a copy of the Soviet T-54A tank, however, with some updates and improvements. The first notable difference you'll see with these tanks is that they're covered in explosive reactive armor, or ERA, specifically the Chinese FY series of ERA. These appear to be similar to that of the Soviet Contact 1 ERA, and therefore likely only able to protect against heat-shaped warheads, and not kinetic ones. Secondly, it's armed with a larger 105mm gun, instead of the 100mm rifled gun. The gun used is actually a licensed copy of the L7 105mm, which was used on early US M1 Abrams tanks. The particular variant they use is called the ZPL-94, which is a longer version of the L7 at 62 calibers, with night vision optics giving it the ability to fight at night, and capability of using APFSDS ammo, it's a threat to many armored vehicles, but it's mostly useless against any modern main battle tank. China still operates about 300 of the Type 59Ds, and they've been slowly phasing them out of service as they procure more modern tanks. Before moving on to their more numerous and capable modern tanks, they also have some 500 Type 79s and Type 88 tanks in reserve or for training units, but for time's sake, we'll skip them. The first up here is a Type 96. It's the most common main battle tank that they operate, with somewhere around 2,500 total. There are three main versions, the Type 96, the Type 96A, and the Type 96B. The base variant entered into service in 1996. It's armed with an even larger 125mm smoothbore gun called the ZPT-98, and with it, a Russian-style autoloader system. These autoloaders used by China and Russia allow for a much higher sustained rate of fire compared to the US Abrams, for example. The Abrams, instead of having an autoloader, has a fourth crew member who serves as the loader, which obviously will eventually get tired and cannot continue at the same pace in protracted engagements. The Type 96's armor is steel and composite on the frontal hull and turret. This gives it an estimated protection similar to that of older Soviet-era T-72s. However, its lower frontal hull plate is only steel. It also has a 730 horsepower engine, which is really not good for its weight, really hurting its ability to maneuver. The Type 96A featured several necessary upgrades, such as the arrow-shaped modular armor installed on the frontal turret of the tank, as well as newer FY4 ERA on the frontal upper glacis. It also has a newer, stronger 800 horsepower engine, giving it slightly better, yet still a poor power-to-weight ratio in terms of modern tanks. This tank is also armed with the ZPT-98 125mm smoothbore gun, which is also capable of using Russian-made ATGMs. It's also equipped with a first-generation thermal imaging system that can detect tanks at night up to 2 kilometers away. 
Then, in the mid-2010s, reports started to come out about a new version of the Type 96, which later was called the Type 96B. Not a ton is known about this for sure, but it appears to feature an array of upgrades, such as a much better 1,130 horsepower engine, said to be a copy of the same engine the Russian T-72 B3 model 2016 uses, as well as a new transmission, chassis, ventilation, and a second generation thermal imaging system that increases nighttime detection, as well as a muzzle reference sensor. The armor is apparently somewhat better as well, so overall it appears to be an improved tank. Then finally, we have China's third generation main battle tank, the Type 99. They currently have two variants, the baseline Type 99 and the Type 99A. It's armed with a longer 50 caliber version of the ZPT-98 and fires the same ammo as the Type 96 tanks. The base armor for the Type 99 is said to be higher than that of the Type 96, and with the newer FY series of ERA, brings the armor up to very respectable levels. The Type 99A has a new 1,500 horsepower engine, as well as an active protection system designed to protect against heat and RPGs, and a laser warning receiver. The Type 99A also has an improved gun with a new projectile, called the DTC-10-125. It's a kinetic APFSDS round said to have penetration somewhere between 650 to 800 millimeters at 2 kilometers putting it nearly on par with some of the most capable US kinetic rounds, like the M829A4. The tank also has a third generation thermal imaging system for both the commander and gunner, an automatic target tracking with friend or foe identification system, and a new ballistics computer. China likely has over 1,000 total Type 99s. China also operates a light tank called the Type 15. It's armed with a 105mm gun with an autoloader. That gun can fire AP FSDS and ATGMs. And while the APFSDS ammo is probably too weak to defeat modern main battle tank armor, many of China's potential enemies still use older tanks where it would be more effective, like the M60 Patton used in Taiwan. Also, a light tank like this is perfect for use on ground where heavier tanks might have too much difficulty being used. For example, the more mountainous and highland regions on their border with India and Vietnam, and also Taiwan, where if China ever did invade, they would have to quickly deploy armor after the amphibious landing. Main battle tanks are typically too heavy to be deployed onto beaches, such as Taiwan has on their west coast. So instead they would have to wait to secure a port to dock larger transport ships, or airdrop them. And this Type 15 smaller size means that twice as many can be carried and dropped by air in their Y-20s. So China's tank force has some pros, but also cons. In some ways, they're quite advanced vehicles that will get the job done. But on the other hand, they appear to have some serious design flaws, such as having only simple steel plate armor on the side hull of their Type 96s and even Type 99s. Even the most basic RPG can penetrate the tank from this aspect. And from modern and urban warfare we've seen over the past 20 years from Iraq to Syria, tanks are regularly hit from this angle. And, again, in the event that China were to invade Taiwan, we would expect to see a lot of similar urban warfare tactics and insurgency tactics being used on China, like ambushing tanks. Also, Chinese tanks apparently still have to rely on maps, like Russian T-72 tanks, as they lack satellite navigation displays. Also, they still operate a large number of extremely outdated Type 59Ds, as mentioned. Those going up against any modern tanks can expect to lose most every engagement, so could these flaws be done for propaganda, so they can show off a larger force with minimal spending, or lack of knowledge? Or could it be that China's PLA isn't built around a doctrine of counterinsurgency, and instead pure state-to-state -state symmetrical warfare? It seems like China is overlooking the possibility of an insurgent shooting at a Type 96 with an RPG, but instead expect their tanks to engage other tanks, such as the M1 Abrams or Taiwanese M60 Patton, head-to-head. -head. Or, perhaps, China sees the main battle tank as becoming less important in future warfare. Threats from asymmetrical attacks, such as ATGMs, along with IEDs and other mines, have made tanks more vulnerable than ever. And while newer improvements to tanks, like advanced composite armor, active defense systems, and other upgrades have helped, they are extremely expensive to design and deploy. They're also more sensitive, requiring more maintenance, and while most of these do help the crew survive, the tank itself is often still damaged and possibly left inoperable in the process. Because of this, there are those that argue that the main battle tanks are reaching the end of their combat value, 
And recently, we've seen Russia have setbacks with the T-14. The US canceled their Abrams replacement due to costs. Israel scaled back their tank force. The UK canceled their Challenger 2 replacement. And now France and Germany searching for vehicles that could provide similar capabilities without necessarily being a main battle tank itself. So, whatever the reason, it is what China has. Perhaps they see building up more advanced stealth fighters, warships, and aircraft carriers, as well as hypersonic weapons, as more of a priority. With them, they can still hold the US at bay in creating a buffer in the Western Pacific. And then, maybe later, spend more time on their ground forces, 